Hey guys, Ms. Gosling here. In this video, we're going to talk about the cosmic microwave background. By the end of the video, you'll be able to describe the cosmic microwave background and use it as evidence for the Big Bang model. So with no further ado, let's get started. Our understanding these applications and skills, of course, the Big Bang model, um, but also the cosmic microwave background, CMB radiation, um, and your applications and, skill and skills, describing both space and time as originating with the Big Bang, and describing the characteristics of cosmic microwave background radiation. So in the, at, in the early 1900s, the prevailing theory about the universe and the universe's history was that the universe was in a steady state. It had always and would always exist in roughly the same way it, do, it did at the time. That is to say, the universe wasn't expanding, the universe wasn't contracting, there had always been galaxies, there had always been stars, and there always would be galaxies and stars. The steady state theory was so fundamental to the to physicists' understanding of cosmology at the time that when Albert Einstein first came up with his theory of general relativity, he was actually convinced that he had done something wrong because his theory of general relativity suggested that the universe could not be in a steady state. Um, and so rather than, so that rather than theorize that the steady state, that the universe just wasn't in a steady state, that it was changing, he actually created something, he actually tried to change his equations to fit this assumption he had about the universe. And in fact, the prevailing interest in the steady state theory, for me, is a really important reminder that as much as physicists and other scientists promote objectivity, it is very, very hard for us to move beyond the assumptions that we make around the universe, even when the evidence we have suggests that those assumptions may be wrong. However, things did change in 1931. They began to change when cosmologist Georges Lemaitre suggested that the universe, rather than being in a steady state, had actually began with a bang. It once was very, very, very small. There was a nothingness. And that, then that nothingness exploded billions of years ago. As with any other paradigm shift, that is to say, any shift in our fundamental understanding of the universe, it took a while for the Big Bang Theory to become the fully accepted model of the beginnings of the universe. Um, in the early era, the, the, biggest, the biggest piece of evidence we had for a Big Bang model of the universe, as opposed to a steady state model of the universe, is the fact that the Big Bang Theory actually explains the observed abundances of hydrogen and helium. That is to say, under the Big Bang model, the universe should be about 75% hydrogen and 25% helium. And when we look at the actual atomic makeup of the universe, we find that that is approximately the case. The steady state model, while it could explain that both hydrogen and helium could be formed, how they might be formed, it doesn't really explain why the universe has so much more hydrogen than helium. However, while the relative abundances of hydrogen and helium was compelling evidence for the Big Bang model, what truly pushed things over the edge, what truly made the Big Bang theory the underlying scientific paradigm, underlying scientific view of the beginning of the universe, was the discovery of the cosmic microwave background, which is what we're going to focus on in this video. A long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and by that I mean in the 1960s in New Jersey, two physicists, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, built a radio receiver for a completely unrelated experiment. And what they noticed was they got an excessive amount of radio waves detected by the detector, and it was a constant barrage of excessive radiation. And they had no idea where this was coming from. In fact, one of their theories that was pretty quickly disregarded was that the noise that the radio, de that the radio um, detector had been detecting was just pigeons pooping on the detector and messing with its measurements. This was pretty quickly disregarded, however, because the radiation they were measuring was isotropic. It was constant. Now, as all good scientists do, Penzias and Wilson were com in communication with other scientists. And coincidentally, as they were discovering this strange radio wave, this strange microwave radiation that they had been capturing in their radio receiver, the researchers at Princeton University had devised an experiment to try to find the cosmic microwave background. Because they theorized if there was in fact a hot big bang, as 
the Big Bang Theory suggests. Then, there should be a lot of electromagnetic radiation released during that period of recombination and decoupling that we talked about in the Big Bang video. Specifically, when the hydrogen and helium nuclei combined with the free electrons in the universe to create the first atoms, a significant amount of photons should have been released as the universe went from opaque to transparent. And those photons at the time would have had a temperature, an average temperature of 4,000 Kelvin. Um, as a result, the, those photons should have, as the universe expanded and cooled, expanded and cooled with the universe to have a temperature of approximately 5 Kelvin or so. So in other words, the radiation from that original extremely hot release of photons should have cooled and expanded just as the universe cooled and expanded to the microwave spectrum. And that radiation should exist at a constant level throughout space because recombination and decoupling happened at, an, at approximately the same time throughout the entire universe. In other words, there should be some sort of background microwave radiation that is relative, un, relatively uniform throughout the entire universe. And in fact, there is. And that is what Penzias and Wilson had discovered. Completely unexpectedly and unintentionally, they had discovered the cosmic microwave background. The cosmic microwave background is leftover radiation from the decoupling of matter and radiation. That is, the decoupling of protons and electrons and photons. Initially, again, this was extremely hot. And it was isotropic because we had this decoupling happening throughout the universe. So that cosmic microwave background, we should be able to measure the same amount of radiation throughout the universe, throughout time. And that is what Penzias and Wilson observed with their telescope. And that radiation that was again initially very, very hot should have redshifted to the microwave spectrum as the universe expanded and the universe cooled. And that is again, exactly what Penzias and Wilson found. Rather than hot, visible light or even hotter UV radiation. They found microwave radiation that was extremely cold, just as the Big Bang model of the universe predicted. So let's go back, take a moment, and summarize. How does this cosmic microwave background support the Big Bang model? So first, the CMB demonstrates that the early universe was in thermal equilibrium because that radiation is isotropic. That is to say, what this shows is that the average temperature throughout the universe was in equilibrium because the cosmic microwave background has the same temperature throughout space. It also demonstrates that the early universe was hot enough to produce black body radiation just like a star because the radiation, again, is visible throughout space. So unlike starlight, which is much brighter, closer to a star, and far dimmer, farther away from the star, the cosmic microwave background is the same throughout space, suggesting that it was produced at an, in an equal amount throughout the entire universe. It demonstrates as well that the universe has expanded because the radiation's wavelength has increased and its temperature has decreased. And finally, it demonstrates there were no atoms in the early universe because the cosmic microwave background is an almost perfect black body. Now, I want to dig into that a little bit more. If you remember, the way that we figure out what stars are made of is by comparing their actual stellar spectra to an ideal thermal spectrum, the spectrum of an ideal black body radiation. Each of these dips in the graph represents an atom that is present in the star because those atoms have emission and absorption spectra and photons that match the absorption spectra of those atoms do not get emitted because they are captured by the atom and they stay within the star. However, if there are no atoms, what I should see is a perfect black body radiation curve with none of those jagged lines indicating atomic spectra. And when I look at the cosmic microwave background, this is almost exactly what we see. Instead of jagged lines that match the spectroscopy of different atoms, we see a smooth curve, suggesting that no atoms existed to capture these photons released in the early universe. 
So let's go ahead and look at an example. The peak wavelength of the cosmic microwave background radiation spectrum corresponds to a temperature of 2.76 Kelvin. Identify two other characteristics of the CMB radiation that are predicted from the hot Big Bang theory, and this is a two-mark question. So I'm going to ask you all to go ahead, pause the video, take a moment, answer the question, and then when you're ready, restart the video and go through the mark scheme with me. So here is our example mark scheme. So you'll notice there are three points here, which means that if you, and the question is only two marks, as long as you list two of these three things, you should give yourself full marks. So first, you should have said either that the CMB is isotropic or that it, ex it appears the very same from every viewing angle with the longer phrase here just being a definition of the word isotropic. You should also be able, you should also have said that it was homogenous, that is to say that the CMB is the same throughout the universe. And you should have said that it is a, that it emits black body radiation. So any of those, as long as you have two of those three things in exact words, give yourself two out of two. If not, take a moment, make yourself some, make, make yourself a flashcard answering this question, because this is one of the most common questions on paper three for your exam. So let's go ahead and talk takeaways. First, the cosmic microwave background is isotropic throughout the universe. That is to say, it is the same throughout the universe. The cosmic microwave background is evidence for a hot big bang because it suggests that the universe was once uniformly hot enough to produce black body radiation. And it is evidence that the universe has expanded because its wavelength has increased and its energy has decreased. So there you have it guys. This is the evidence the best evidence that we have to support the Big Bang model of the universe. So with that being said, go ahead and do a little exploring of the cosmic microwave background on your own. Best of luck and happy learning.